Welcome to ATC, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today I will be presenting a case of a one year old boy who was brought to our ear with complaints of cough and fast breathing. On pad triangle assessment, appearance of the child, the child was crying and sick looking. Breathing, there was nasal flaring with increased respiratory effort and chest retractions. Circulation, central and extremities are pink in color. Primary assessment, airway was patent, no pooling of secretions, no gurgling what sounds. What is your assessment after primary uh, pad, uh, pad assessment? assessment uh, I am suspecting a respiratory component. You are suspecting a respiratory, respiratory component. Disorder. Okay, okay. Uh, primary assessment, airway is patent, no pooling of secretions, no gurgling sounds or strider. Okay. Breathing, respiratory rate was 62 per minute, saturation of 90 percentage on room air. There are subcostal and intercostal retractions present and on auscultation there was bilateral crepitations and wrong eye was present. Crepitations uh, as well as wrong, wrong eye. eye. Okay. Uh, and uh, we started uh, the patient on or the child on uh, O2 mask, uh, 5 liter O2 and uh, nebulization was given, salbutamol uh, 0.3 ml in 3 ml NS was given, 3 cycles 20 minutes apart so it started. Circulation uh, pulse rate was 113 per minute. BP of 90, 60 millimeters of mercury. Uh, capillary refilling time was 2 seconds. Okay. Uh, the child was irritable and uh, crying, and, uh, and uh, the pupils were equal and reactive. GRBS of 92 was there, and exposure weight of the child was uh, 9.8 kg, and temperature was 97.6. Okay. So uh, we have a one year old child one -year -old who child. presented with uh, acute onset of breathlessness. Breath. Three days history. Oh. Or two days history. It was uh, three days uh, cough and uh, breath fast breathing since today morning. Fever? That morning. Fever history. Fever history was not there. No history of fever. Fever. No history of fever. The patient has presented to you with the increased work of breathing. Yeah. And uh, since last two days. Work of breathing or that day itself? That day itself. Day itself. Uh, only three on days, that day. Yeah. That day three morning. Days, that three day, day back what the child didn't notice much but okay. today morning because of the fast breathing. Okay. They uh, noticed actually. Okay. So the child has got now wheeze on examination and you yeah. have got some crepitations. crepitations so yes. that is your findings. Yeah. No history of fever. No history of fever. On temperature also here it was normal. Okay. So one year old child, what is your first suspicion at this point of time? Uh, one year old child with wheezing, uh, most uh, commonly it can be a bronchiolitis. My first diagnosis will be a foreign body aspiration. <laughs> because there is no history of fever. So if there is any upper respiratory tract infection that is preceding the fever, the, that preceding the infection, then we will have to suspect that. This is one thing. It's a sudden onset of breathlessness. You said today, that day morning only they have noticed they the have noticed fast breathing, fast that, breathing day. that day itself. Yeah. And uh, the child have any episode of choking. That is the most important no, thing choking, that uh, no, we no, haven't no, got. But no, why the fever also. history? I think it is either misguiding or there might be some fever history. If fever history is not there, this is first thing we have to think in terms of a foreign body aspiration. And foreign body aspiration ca can be... But there is cough since three days. <coughs> there is having cough and rhinitis since three days. Okay. So that gives you a clue that coughs and rhinitis. Even rhinitis. cough also, I will say, uh, maybe the first thing, it will be a small foreign body that was being causing irritation. Rhinitis, yes, we can attribute to it some viral pathology. Because why fever is not there, then, uh, then, uh, then we have to always think in terms of a one-year-old child highly vulnerable for a foreign body aspiration. So, they can just come up with this presentation also to the ER. They need not present with choking episodes. Mm -hmm. They can have been uh, treating for the, maybe like two year, three year, they will be treating with multiple doctors mm -hmm. for uh, pneumonia, multiple episode of pneumonia. Later on, they would have taken, somebody would have taken a CT and at that time they would have uh, recognized uh, that there is a foreign body aspiration and a bronchoscopy would have done and revealed later. So. This history is very important. Suppose the child is not with fever, always think in terms of that. So, bronchiolitis, yes, the age group, they are at risk factors. So, when you give a background history of rhinitis, then my differential diagnosis changes to bronchiolitis. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is fine. So, uh, what what is our primary intent? What is our, what will be the reason? Leave it, whether it is foreign body, bronchiolitis, any of mm -hmm. these things. What will be our primary aim for this child? As you suggested, you have started the child on oxygen. oxygen. You do a PAT assessment. So, PAT assessment comprises of Three things. What are the three things in pattern assessment? Appearance. Appearance of the child. child. Breathing. Breathing pattern of the child and, and circulation. circulation of the child. So, depending upon these three things, you will come to a conclusion. Mm -hmm. So, appearance of the child, the most important, what are the things that you need to look in for? Whether the child is sick looking, sick looking. whether the child is stable, irritable. These are the most important things that you need to answer in your uh, appearance. Breathing, the most important thing, what is the pattern of breathing? 
whether the child is having as you said nasal flaring yes, the child is having indrawing so these are all signs that the child is in respiratory distress yes, so if the child is otherwise stable he will be just staying like this and there is no <coughs> increase in respiratory effort and finally coming to the circulation part or the color of the child which is attributed to indirectly to the circulation only whether the child is pink or whether there is the mortal appearance is there or any evidence of cyanosis so that is especially in a uh, neonate uh, when the child is coming with the uh, uh, cyanosis and all you need to think in terms of an either a congenital cyanotic heart disease or maybe very early presentation like four to five days with cyanosis a respiratory distress syndrome meconium aspiration this all will be a differential diagnosis so the making a pat assessment is the most important thing and from that pat assessment you should come up with a conclusion what is the problem that the child is having whether this child as you said the child is having you have come to a conclusion that the child is having a breathing issue so we have come okay probably a breathing issue or it can be a cardiac issue but here there is no feature suggestive of any cardiac issue just a tachypnea and some uh, history of uh, rhinitis and all is only available so we have concluded okay the child is having a primarily a respiratory issue so from uh, this you have started your primary assessment of the child started with a b c d so in a when the first thing that i will like to see whether there is any added sound like strider you said there is a wheeze can a foreign body obstruction can produce wheeze uh, it gets dislodged it can dislodge definitely it can also produce wheeze yes. so the presentation we uh, initial phase they will come with choking strider and features of obstruction now it is goes down and it uh, dislodges in somewhere in the trachea it will just many tiny object it can produce all those symptoms so that is very important so a b you have uh, said the regarding the respiratory rate most importantly the component is the saturation of the child saturation of the child was 90 percent what is your target that you wanted above 95 percent the child is otherwise normal no history of cyanotic heart disease or not anything we are target will be about 90 so uh, suppose the same i'm just giving you another scenario since we are discussing in uh, one year old child i'm giving you an option that uh, you have uh, in the pediatric ER, you are getting a uh, 10 day old baby. Okay. Uh, the mother have noticed some uh, cyanosis. Okay. Uh, and the child has been brought into from another hospital. So the child had spent few days in the NICU. Child has been brought because the respiratory distress or the cyanosis is not resolving. So that is the history. You have started assessing the child and you have found out the saturation is around 75 percentage. So what will be your actual plan? Uh, there can be a respiratory or a uh, circulation component, cardiac component. Okay, that's okay. So that assessment part, I am just leaving it. What will you do for this hypoxia? 75 percentage of. We start on which implementation. Okay, so what are our concerns for this patient? What are our concerns? Why there is an adult patient? We are not at all concerned. We'll just start O2. But why? In this style, we have got a concern. They will go into cardiac arrest because of Why hypoxia. because of cardiac arrest? Why they will go into cardiac arrest? Hypoxia, because of the hypoxia. Hypoxia, they will go into cardiac arrest. What is the problem in supplementing oxygen? Oxygen, oxygen dependent. There are shunt dependent lesions. So, if you are giving excess amount of oxygen, that shunt can get closed and the shunt can, the child can go into further deterioration. So, how will you know? We don't have an echo, we don't have an expertise to do in that emergency situation is very difficult for a doing in a six day, five day old child. Um, so how will you know? Preductal, postductal. Preductal, postductal in a BCER, in a child, six day old child, it's pretty difficult. You do preductal, preductal I am telling you 75 percentage. Give oxygen and see if the saturation is... Yes, yeah, so that is, uh, that is one thing that we can see. Give oxygen for five minutes and you see the saturation is improving. If saturation is improving, you are dealing with the patient with primary lung issue. Probably there is no harm in giving oxygen. If you are seeing like 75 percent, it has increased only to 80. It does not signify you are giving like 5 to 10 liters of O2. The saturation has improved to 90 to 95 percentage. You are happy. Mm -hmm. You can continue on O2. But the saturation is not improving. It is still something like 80, 82 and all. You need not continue oxygen. It is better to stop oxygen. That is one thing. And you look at the child. How is the child? If the child is very active without any respiratory distress, only with cyanosis. Just do masterly inactivity. That is the only thing that you need to do. Do not give any oxygen. The child is in distress, yes. 
you need to look in whether it can be as i told any of the respiratory distress syndrome or myocardium aspiration or it can be post cesarean section uh, uh, respiratory depression all those things can come up to a neonate so all those differential should keep in your mind but in uh, when you, they are presenting with cyanosis this is what you need to do so that is just for the sake of discussion i wanted to add on so now we'll come back to this child we have a one day one year old child who has presented with bronchiolitis now we have assessed him and started him on oxygen so uh, you have bilateral uh, lung crepitations and bilateral vs is there for the child now what will be the next action plan whether you wanted to give iv or oral agents any iv medications or any oral medications you wanted to send whether you want to take an abg for this child i don't want to take an abg for this child at all it's a painful procedure for a one year old who has presented with respiratory distress again it is going even i don't want to take a grbs if the child was taking feeds okay and she is conscious and oriented i don't want an unwanted prick even giving a nebulization for a one year old child is going to be a difficult situation if they cry again then again they start desaturating so uh, whether uh, you wanted i personally if it's a short history i don't want to start on on any invasive investigation or any injections i don't want to start maybe nebulization as you said <coughs> steroid and uh, uh beta block uh, sorry uh, beta agonist nebulization that you have said maybe yes we need to start rust what else you wanted to do you wanted to give an antibiotic my question will be antibiotic whether the second question antiviral or you want to use any other agents we will use uh, supportive management is only required what supportive management you want just uh, this thing um, short acting beta agonist okay then uh, we can use uh, uh, like a nebulization of steroids okay also. so not resolving the child is not resolving still then, uh, we can uh, <coughs> oral steroids we can start the child doctor. oral steroids oral steroids what is the oral steroids that you wanted to start uh, so, uh, syrup anything, oh, anything. anything. you can start prednisolone you can start dexamethasone you can start methylprednisolone whatever is available you can start yeah. whether you wanted iv or oral steroid Uh, if the, uh, this patient actually had decreased oral intake mm. uh, she is he uh, like he was not taking orally so we have to give iv not taking orally because of why because of reason we are irritability he okay. child wasn't taking since 3 days so what of the lab and if you give an iv again maybe once you settle the hypoxia the irritability might come down yeah. okay so that is one thing so don't judge by seeing the initial evaluation you just start with nebulization maybe after some time the child will be okay the child will be starting taking some oral sips of water maybe at that time you can plan of giving any of the oral uh, steroids oral steroids and iv steroids they have got same bioavailability so there is no point in you are giving an iv oral nothing you can give oral it has got same bioavailability after 3 to 4 hours only it will act so that is the reason why when you see an anaphylaxis don't wait by giving just your hydrocortisone and i will which is going to act after a long time you have to treat anaphylaxis now mm. so we are giving adrenaline okay. so the time duration will be more so uh, you can give oral uh, steroids dexamethasone oral before and all oral syrups was not available with other steroids and palatability was a significant concern so dexamethasone was the preferred agent previously now we can have there are got uh, various uh, palatable solutions so you can start and uh, whether you need to admit this child yes. that again you depend upon your assessment and o2 requirement mm -hmm. the child is requiring o2 Then definitely we need to admit the child after your nebulization and all we can observe the child for next 2 hours the child is maintaining saturation above 95% the mother have been taught to how to use an ebulizer at home or uh, they are okay with that you can discharge the move but uh, with one year old md and all it will be very difficult for the child to understand and to take synchronize with even with a spacer it is going to be a difficult job so that is your decision you observe the patient and see how the uh, child is going to observe there are for example croup there is a wesley scope score so where we can see and decide but these are all uh useful when you can have can't have a clinical judgment so here whether the patient is requiring oxygen support definitely you need to be admitted okay. antibiotics you said regarding crepitations uh, this patient mostly can be a viral pathology mm. most commonly respiratory syncytial virus so we we can probably wait patient. and see because antibiotics against in a children to start off maybe a double edged sword the child will come back you to with diarrhea mm -hmm. so that is the next most important problem so you have to be very cautious we have got uh, uh if you are definitely like you are not uh, 
admitting this child maybe you can discharge them home but if you are admitting definitely you will be doing some blood investigation so at that point of time you will be getting a chest x-ray a cbc crp since crepitation is there there is an underlying viral pneumonia can be a possibility mm -hmm. so the crp might be on a little bit on a higher side also so maybe depending upon that there is persistent fever spike the child never had any fever mm -hmm. so never had any fever then we can wait and watch but fever spikes is there definitely we need to start them on and uh, further doses of antibiotic what antibiotic you will choose any of the gram positive coverage starting with the uh, crystalline insulin amoxicillin clavulanic acid amoxicillin any of this agents is uh, equally good but uh, one other concern may be it's a viral pneumonia with an atypical presentation but in children it will be mostly gram positive mm -hmm. that is a upper respiratory uh, reasons uh, for the uh, major infection so uh, that is what uh, you need to do what has been done for this child yeah after that uh, after the nebulization was over he uh, improved yeah. okay and uh, Further worsening was not seen, but he was admitted. Okay. And he also had similar history. Uh, one history was there three months back, similar history was okay. there. Okay. That time fever, everything was there. Okay. This time only rhinitis comes. Again, three months back, one history. Yeah, history. Is Again, he is coming back without fever. We have to go back. I will say, just yeah. keep that in mind. See, I am, maybe we are over diagnosing a foreign body aspiration, but this is the truth. This is the truth that maybe we are under diagnosing also. So definitely they will have, if the same child is coming back after three months of time, they definitely go ahead with the CT evaluation. If there is anything else, pneumonia, anything, any of the X-ray findings is suspicious, they have to evaluate him for a foreign body aspiration, which would have happened like six months or three months back, that is ca causing his recurrent symptoms of uh, this thing. Okay. And he became okay. Yeah, yeah, he was instructed. Given any antibiotics? No antibiotics. Sir. No antibiotics. Only supportive not management. Only supportive management. Nebulizations. And just oxygen uh, support. With oxygen support. Prongs was kept there. IV cannula. IV fluids. IV fluids. They sent for. Uh, we sent for uh, blood investigations. IV fluids was started for. IV fluids. No. No IV fluids. No fluids the child started taking orally. Start after the uh, nebulization, the child started, started taking, taking orally. orally. So, uh, how uh, anything else that you wanted to do? Chest X-ray was taken. Okay. It showed a bilateral scattered infiltrate. So. Bilateral scattered infiltrate. So, it's an again a viral pathology, a respiratory syncytial virus. Do we have any vaccines for this? Vaccine prophylactic, uh, like latest uh, update is that there is a prophylactic uh, monoclonal antibody, like uh, Pavlisumab. So, whom we will Pavlisumab. give that? Who are more high risk for uh, getting this virus infection? No, that is high risk for getting infection. You tell right. me, any child above the six right. years of age, they are at high risk. Right. So, yes. whom will you uh, definitely whom you wanted to use this? Uh, like Simple thing, no. The child is getting treatment for an ALL on that age group. All of the primary immunodeficiency, anything right. is there. Congenital right. cyanotic heart disease, anything is there. Right. A surgical repair has been done. Who is at high risk? Right. Low risk patient, we routinely don't need to start yes. on this. So, initially when you see COVID vaccination, how we start the COVID vaccination? Virus. Extremes of age, that elderly who is at risk, we start and then slowly. So, they are at more prone to develop more complications. So, who are more prone to develop, we need to start them on that. So, that is what is the recommendation mm -hmm. is all about. And uh, uh, again, uh, any role for adrenal nebulization here? Adrenal nebulization also. We can give. We can try because evidences are not there, but still we can try because we say everything inflammation, the airway inflammation, everything can be decreased by giving uh, adrenal nebulizations. Okay. Hypertonic saline also. Hypertonic, 3% saline. That is the one, 3% uh, saline. Again, it can decrease the edema and inflammation. It has been found to be useful. Yes. Okay. So, uh, the nutshell will be uh, when you have a child with uh, breathlessness, that's, that's what we have discussed. One of the commonest differential diagnoses for this age group, this age group, okay. because the same child is coming after like 8 to 10 years, we are differential diagnosis will be different. We will call with a different name, we will call it as a viral bronchitis, but when the child is coming at this, we will call it as bronchitis. Almost the presentation will be the same and pathophysiology is also the same, but always uh, keep that recurrent uh, lung infections. Foreign body aspiration is one of your differential diagnoses always, unless until you have that in your mind, you will miss that. Okay, mm -hmm. fine. Thank, Thank you. Thanks.